this weekend my friend is the fa cup final the first ever manchester derby in an fa cup final um it's going to be a very interesting game i think it's going to be a tense one for the for the fans of the manchester clubs we uh, earlier on me and you did our predicted 11s for the for the games so we could uh, see what this is basically what we think the managers will pick rather than what we would pick um so i'm going to put yours up on screen now uh it's an interesting one me and you were slightly different in what we went for but not uh not massively different i think there was one player difference in each side but um let's have a look so this is my predicted 11. Uh, i've gone for rashford up front for united sancho yeah. off the left and bruno on the right ericsson and then fred and casemiro uh luke shaw on the left with lindelof in the middle and wan basaka so i know straight away you disagree with that but um, i'll tell you why i've gone for that and why i think they'll go for that i think they'll play bruno off the right for that extra bit of defensive work also fred has been good recently and he was excellent he did an excellent job on uh i could i could Bruyne. see that i could see that but it's a it's, it's a defensive 11 isn't it i've got a more attacking that's just probably yours is probably more realistic i've got a more attacking one so fred did such a good job on de bruyne in the uh when united beat city earlier in the season like de bruyne was largely quiet in that game and i just think fred did such a good job but i don't think they'll want to sacrifice ericsson's play through the midfield and to the attack i think anthony will be on the bench but not starting i he's think injured, eh? he's not injured he, well no he's back apparently for the final but i think he'll be on the bench because he's obviously been injured i also think fucking rolling around like his leg was brought over there yeah i think ideally i think they'd like to play sancho off the right because he's Mate, been so look much look better Ganacho's, there look, Ganacho's been but I don't you think that he'd be a better option against Carl Walker off the bench? And yeah, that's absolutely like yeah. just what I think. Like so your this is your United eleven. So you've gone with Ganacho off the left, Sancho off the right. Sancho's been awesome off the right, I've got to say. Rashford through the middle, and then Bruno, Fred over Ericsson in midfield. And you've gone Delo as left back and Luke Shaw as the centre back. I think that's the defensive side of that, I think is quite a good shout. Because I think Luke Shaw did such a good job against uh Harland. Harland. Yeah, sorry, mate. Uh he did such a good job against Harland in that game that I could see Ten Hag reverting back to it. And then he can bring in, especially because he can then put Delo on the left rather than having to worry about Malassia, who can be a bit hit and miss, is obviously young as well. So it's kind of like that. Do you know what I mean? It's like it gets the and it gives you that balance as well, you know, that centre half, yeah, uh, that, that Martinez and, and Varane have so well. Uh, and we've played Luke Short's played there, he's done really well. And Dalot's played left midfield, left left back, and done really well as well. Wan Bissaka, defensive qualities, that's why you want him there. So, uh, who would who would Dalot be against on that right? Silva or Mares? That you think he could deal with that because he's quite pacey, Dalot. And then you've got um Awan Basaki against Grealish that I fancy all day long. One Interesting. On one. So I'll bring up the City ones in just a second. I do think I think Bruno plays off the right for United because I think I could see it that just gives him a bit more solidity off the ball. And also it were it did work against City in that recent game. The thing the only way I can see that is 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 just having legs in there where well, yeah. Uh, well, no, if, if, with mine, there's more legs. With yours, you haven't, because Ericsson is not that mobile. Yeah, Fred's the legs, isn't he? And then you've got Bruno as the legs off the side. It's interesting because I can see, I can see the arc. Like, if I was picking, I'd probably go with your similar, sim, more similar to your side. But I think Ten Hag will go with Bruno off the right, and because I think you'll want to get Fred in there. But I'm not sure if he'll want to take Ericsson out because Ericsson is so good playing through. And I think the one thing United can't you need people to do. You need people who are going to keep the ball. Ericsson does that. Yeah. And I also think um, some of the mistakes that some teams make against City is they almost try and hold on 
they just go they worry so much about what city can do they play super defensive and madrid in the second leg made that mistake and they just got taken apart so mm. you've got to be able to keep the ball and you've got to be able to to push on and when you do get those transitions try and win the game and get a goal on the break and i think united is so dangerous on the counter-attack that it's possible that's where they can win the game that's where they won the game in the uh, in the league game most recently um so our, our city sides differ more so in formation than anything so i think city will line up like this like they did against madrid which is almost like a three ends up being like a three 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 so i've got a kanji diaz and walker at the back and then john stones and rodri in front and then Gadung, uh Gadunga, i can never say his name and de bruyne with bernardo silva off the right Grealish off the left but de bruyne will jump he'll play right off harland like a traditional 10 and good Gadungan will drop back in with the, uh, to make it a three with Rodri and Stones. Um, and then Stones will also drop back into the back three if he needs to. If they're under pressure. And it, it's just, it works. If they play so that well. formation, they play that formation on the break. Well, um, Rashford and Sancho will have a lot he'll, of room. He'll play, he'll play Anthony. Yeah. Yeah, I could see that. I think um, there's space there, isn't it? Like if they had that formation late on in the game, you could imagine Ganacho yeah. and all if sorts. If they play of that that formation, it'll be Anthony, Sancho, Rashford. Yeah, I could see that. Mate. I could see that. It's interesting though because the one thing which I think Pep has done well, maybe so well. Could, sorry for me. It could, maybe um, it could be Fernandez, and then they can match him up. But I don't well, this see. Is, this is what I think. So if they've got this formation, um, Fred will man mark De Bruyne effectively and then Casemiro will take care of uh Gundogan or whoever you know you've got middle. yes sir and then uh you know you've got Grealish versus Juan Bissaka and Bruno versus uh sorry Bernardo Silva versus uh Dallas it's not Roger wrong it's got not got an H oh, no, it's, not it's, it's the proper Rodri you know the real yeah. the real yeah. deal but what City have done, which has impressed me massively this year, mate, particularly since Christmas, or certainly uh, the second part, I know, second part of the season, is um, in the big games versus Madrid, versus Arsenal, versus Bayern, first and foremost, tactically, he's set up to stop the other teams with his formation, with his positioning of John Stones, etc. And then they play and they play to you know a very very high level and i think if you're if you're pep sometimes he's got a habit of overthinking stuff and i look at it and i think what if he looks at united and their likely sides maybe the, you know a couple of connotations of it how will he try and stop united playing on the break and that's why i think we'll see john stones and rodri together to try and stop people like bruno sancho and you know whoever plays off the left getting on the break and playing through the lines with Eric leaves, leaves a lot of space out wide doesn't it it does but john stones will slot back in as a four and they'll play more as a defensive four like he comes it you know he yeah no, the, the free is not wide free it's a wide free as well isn't it? and yeah. he's kind of walking and getting out of trouble with his pace so but yeah, it's, it, it, it all depends on it's not, Wembley's always difficult. It's never. It's always. It's going to be dry. It's going to be unless the sprinklers are off sprinklers and stuff. But it's going to be hot. It's going to be dry, and that's it's. It's difficult then to zip it in when the, when the grass dries up. So it's all about. I a also good start. Think, it's yeah. a good start as well at Wembley. Yeah. So that's not the Etihad. The, the, the dominant of the Etihad. They're not so dominant away from it. So. They've had some dodgy results. United have beat him at Old Trafford, so it's all about the start. It's not. It's not going to be a a, a massacre. I hope. I hope it's a good game, but it's, it's not going to be easy. And, and City are by far the favourites, but it's not a not winnable game. We're not playing Barcelona. No, too far yeah. And I think if you look at the teams, those we mentioned those five league games which they've lost um, City this year. A, a lot of those teams have got at them on in on the break and in the breakdown in play when they've won the ball pressing. So what they've done is they've won the ball and then they transition out wide or in those spaces where there is space against City and they use it quickly and they move the ball quickly. And United do have players to do that. Sancho's hit a bit of form. Fernandez has hit a bit of form. Rashford, like, like you said, they play a wide three. 
if you could isolate Rashford versus Diaz, I'm taking Rashford all day long. If you isolate Rashford versus uh, Walker, I think it's more difficult because Walker's got that extra yard of pace. So he has, you know, Rashford would find it a bit more difficult to go past him. He'd have to be a bit more clever with how he does it. But um, it's it's fascinating. The only one way of beating Walker, these speedy fullbacks, you've got to get him in the last third and you've got to get him moving, twisting yeah. side to side. You're not going to beat it for pace. Well, ironically, like your brother you, used to do, you, you know when him, he you've used to go... To get shot in because otherwise yeah. he's going to get back and tackle you. So you've got to do it in the last third, boom, 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 and then do what you need to do. Otherwise, he's just going to get back, back at you. Yeah. It's, um, it's, just, it's really interesting because Pep can overthink these big games. And like in the Arsenal game, what he did so well was they let Arsenal press him, but instead of playing through the press, they played direct to Haaland and Haaland played it in, you know, for De Bruyne and they played more like a direct, almost like a long ball game. But it was, you know, they, they, I just wonder how they will try and set up to stop United and then play their game, implement their game. And um, this is the lineup you went for. Um, no, that's your United one. Sorry. There. So you've gone with uh, Mares off the right rather than Bru. Uh, keep calling him Bruno. Um, rather than Bernardo Silva, you've gone Grealish on the left. You've gone De Bruyne. You've gone Rodri and Gudungan as a two, and then you've gone a traditional four with a Kanji Stones, Diaz, and Walker. I wouldn't be surprised to see that. I do think Silva will play off the right rather than Mares, but the rest of it, I think the personnel will be that, and it'll just be a case of how they, you know, how they line up tactically. Because I do, I've got a feeling he's going to go with the one that I said with the three and Stones will effectively play almost like defence and midfield. He'll just move in and out as he's needed. Um, but I am interested by it because. I think United are capable of winning the game, but if they're in their own heads and worrying too much about what City can do, you almost sit back and become too defensive. United do have to implement their game when they can win the ball back and make those transitions count because they've got the players to do it, mate. Like, if you look at, just bring up my predicted side there, if, say, you've got, like, Fred and Casemiro there in the middle, if they when they win that ball back within the midfield areas if they can play it up to you know or get it to ericsson he or, and casemiro as well they play these long long passes to the to the wide players fernandez sancho rashford they they play those it's almost like a first time ball for after the transition and they're away those wingers and if city do line up with those three it leaves so much space for that quick sort of direct ball in a big massive Wembley pitch and I think that could suit that could be where United cause them problems because they've played that ball so well all season to route to Rashford on the left just Casemiro not even looking and just hitting it first time sort of whipping it over to the left I just think that it's almost like a no-brainer but that's why Fred's got to play you might not be the most technically gifted footballer even though he's capable of it they need his legs to cause a bit of mayhem in the middle of the pitch, win the ball back, etc. Um, if Anthony is fit, would you play Anthony over Sancho? If Bruno plays off the right, or would you play Sancho? No, I'll play Sancho. I would too. Two reasons: one, he's in form. Plus Anthony off the bench, then you can put Bruno back in if you've got to change the game. So, yeah, yeah I think having Ganacho and Anthony off the bench is two really strong options because you've got to remember there's no Martial, he's made of glass. So you've got two really exciting wingers you can bring on, and you've got Weg Veghorst to score the winner in the last minute. Um, <clears throat> but ultimately, I think Sancho looks after the ball as well. Like yeah, he, doesn't, he very rarely gives the ball away, Sancho. Hearing, sto hearing stories about Mason Greenwood coming out. Mm, it's... What happened? Oh, I told you, didn't I? Told what you. Happened? What happened? Told you. No, you what won't happened? take 29 again. You will. You won't. Mate. You will. I'll be amazed if he does. Right. Um, 
but we'll see I, I i look i understand the reasons why you say it and i just i just don't don't see it i don't see it coming to fruition but what a, like that's like if they eat from a purely football point of view if they get him back that's like signing a new world class youngster isn't it like it might be like wow this is weird. but it's going to take him time and he hasn't trained and stuff like that for a year basically but no no from a purely football point of view of course he is a great asset it's just whether they want to go deal with the rest of it with sponsors and the women's team and and the, the backlash and and the rest of it but i'll tell you one thing if the qataris take over they won't give a shit. they will say <laughs> they will say no, yeah. has he been charged with anything no 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 get him on the pitch and get him playing but whether you agree or you don't agree it's going to be a decision which has got to be made um and he's an asset either way like whether they keep him as an asset or they sell him he's an asset which there'll be clubs which will pay for him um and that's just what it comes down to fa cup final mate um give me one player to watch from each team and why say again one player to watch from each team match winners or just someone who you think is going to have a big influence on the game and why um david de gea for obvious reasons keeper and rodri over rodri interesting so for me i think um the two big players are going to be um i think the fred versus de bruyne duel will ultimately have a big say in the game because Rob fred is either quality or he's absolute dog shit. So what it's going to be is, is Fred going to turn up and be nine and nine or 10 out of 10, or is he going to turn up and be two out of 10? If he turns up and plays like he has in the last couple of games and like he did in the previous city game, and he can keep De Bruyne quiet for the majority of the game, then United have got a fantastic chance. Haaland is going to be interesting because Luke Shaw pocketed him in that game. And I and I can see why you put Luke Shaw ahead of Lindelof. I think Lindelof has been so good in these recent games that Ten Hag will stick with him. But I could see why Luke Shaw would play because he was so good. He wasn't. It wasn't just oh, a good performance by someone. It was like a world class central defensive performance. Um, but ultimately, player to watch from Man City for me, Jack Grealish. Had a oh, tremendous say, end to the say, season. Tremendous end to the season. He caused well, United a bit of trouble well, off the bench in the league game. And I think he's the one to watch. Wan he's not Wan is, Well, know. he did it at Wembley against Brighton. He kept McToma quiet and that really had a massive influence on the game. So I'd say, yeah, that duel as well. Um, I think my prediction for the game is Manchester United win 2-1 and the scorers will be Jaden Sancho and Wout Veghorst. <laughs> Veghorst is going to get a goal in the 90th minute to win the game. That would be I, I, that would make my be funny. Day. That would. And Monday morning at work. <laughs> I've just. Look, I, I, that's a bit tongue in cheek, obviously. But like, I've just, I do have a feeling that City. There's a couple of things which kind of just make me think that United might find a way. It's going to be very difficult, and on paper, City should win three one and be done with it but i've just got a feeling maybe pep overthinks it a little bit with the champions league as well the next yeah. week does he kind of overthink it a bit but i if you if i if you were asking me now what i think the score is i think united will win 2-1 maybe yeah. an extra time what's your prediction for it mate to finish us off uh three two united three two high scoring mate yeah that's interesting because United have been really solid defensively the last couple of games. It's City, isn't it? But they haven't. City have been a bit all over the shop against. Yeah, three, the two, game? three two extra time. Three two extra time. Okay, gonna ask Show to score the winner. Yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Really looking forward to. I gotta be honest. I am really, really looking forward to the FA Cup final. Um, guys, get your predictions in the in the chat and let us know what you think and uh, of course as always give the channel a little follow share it 
Rodri Gig show is every Thursday, and uh, we like to talk football. We like to do a bit of analysis and all the rest What's of it. The last one, the one thing next week. Are we doing the one out? Are we not left? I or think next week. Through? Next week. Next week will be the last one technically, one because Champions League's on the Saturday. Oh, um, nice. And then we normally take like a couple of weeks to me, and then we start doing some transfer stuff and that. Have Sweet. a little break. But um, yeah, the one thing you'll always get with the show is brutally honest opinions. We don't hold back. We don't sugarcoat it. We don't roll off the cliches and all this crap. We'll tell you what we think, no matter what. Um, as always, mate, an absolute pleasure. Sweet. Appreciate your time. Bastard way, no. Congratulations, by the way, everyone, raising £2,000 for the uh, North Air Ambulance Service again uh, in memory of Neil Campbell, which uh, of someone who's close to our hearts. We've got a lot of time for the Campbells. And, uh, yeah, so that was nice. To, uh, to raise a bit of money for charity is always good. Uh, take care. God bless. Have a look on uh, the old FA Cup final because you never know if my duo watch long. Come on, United. <laughs>